Did you know that one in every 600 Americans sleeps out in the open every night? Yeah, neither did I. In fact, I didn't even think about it until one night last March. I was driving home from guitar with my mom that night when I saw a homeless man shivering under an overpass. He was clutching one small backpack and looked like he had practically no shelter from the sub-zero weather. That image bothered me as we drove past and later into the night. Could that really be happening here in Dublin, my privileged and upscale hometown? Was there anything I could do about it? Or was I just gonna feel sad for that man and then come home and sleep in my own warm bed? I realized I had to do something. And after a considerable amount of thought and some discussion with my parents, I decided on a plan of action. Last summer, I started a fundraising drive to buy and distribute 100 sleeping bags for homeless youth. I picked sleeping bags for a couple reasons. One, they're one size fits all, unlike jackets. And two, they're waterproof, unlike blankets. So anybody that has to stay out in the weather, in the elements, can do so with a sleeping bag. And for a while, I didn't know where to donate, till I read about OSU Star House in the dispatch. Now, Star House is incredible because they're the only drop-in center for homeless youth here in central Ohio. And the facilities they provide are astounding. Therapy, all manner of recreational facilities, from sports to art to entertainment, to a computer lab that allows them to complete their educations, to even a fully stocked kitchen. But the one thing that Star House can't provide is a place for these homeless kids to sleep. So there's a field nearby where every night they have to go there and sleep. Now think about that for a sec. There are about 1.4 million homeless kids in the United States today. About 47,000 in Ohio alone. That could so easily have been me, or you, or your friends and family, or your children, or anybody else that you know and love. I think we're all extremely fortunate to be sitting here today instead of lying out there in a field, in the cold. In any case, I was able to raise a lot of money primarily by communicating to a lot of people going door to door in my neighborhood, reaching out to friends and family, talking to teachers and peers. I was able to talk to a lot of people, but I realized something about Dublin, namely that homelessness is invisible there. I mean, that one homeless man that I saw earlier that I was talking about is the only homeless person that I've seen in Dublin in seven years. And people don't even consider it a problem. My school, Dublin Jerome, is pretty philanthropic. We have these annual campaigns to raise money to fight disease, and our yearly food drive is successful. We're able to help a lot of people. I don't think you could call us a selfish community, but there's never been anything here that I've seen that addresses the needs of the homeless. And I think the reason that's there is because we in Dublin have been privileged enough to avoid dealing with homelessness on a personal level. There, if somebody loses their job, the chances are that they can survive on their savings for a month, apply elsewhere, and their quality of life won't fundamentally change. But there are communities here in Columbus where the specter of homelessness hangs like a dark cloud over their heads. And if one person in that household loses a job, everything changes. The opportunities that we have in Dublin to rectify this are just there, but we don't have them because of awareness. And that lack of awareness is sustained by stereotyping. You know, people are homeless because they don't work as hard as I do. They're lazy, they don't pay taxes, they don't even have jobs, they're welfare queens. And of course it's false. It's always been false. You stereotype one segment of the American population and you say they're wrong, they're morally wrong for having the crime of having less money in their bank account than you. And one thing that I learned about homelessness recently is that a reason why homeless job applicants rarely make the cut is because they don't have an address that they can put on their application. See, homelessness is like a cycle. It sustains itself. And once you get into it, 
once you're trapped, it can be so incredibly difficult to escape. And if you're a homeless kid, good luck, because your opportunities are so limited, your trajectory in life so predetermined by your status than anybody else, than any other high school kid compared to me or my fellow high school speakers here tonight or any other high schooler in America. And the only difference is that we live in homes and that gives us more opportunities. I wish that I had been ambitious enough or that I had been able to start a fundraiser that I could just headline and say, let's end homelessness today and it would work. I wish that I could be able to do something like that, but I can't. All I wanted to do was help people that had to stay out in the open at night do so with a little more safety, with a little less discomfort. And really, I don't think I did anything that crazy. All I did was talk to a few people and raise some money. So really, I think it's that lack of awareness I was talking about earlier that stops people from jumping in and helping. Because I've seen that it isn't hard to help if you know. So I think we have a twofold responsibility here tonight, now that we all know. And number one is to help, to devote our time and effort, maybe even some money, to a homeless shelter or center or foundation like OSU Star House or the Huckleberry House, or the Haven of Hope, or the Homeless Families Foundation, and the organizations that do their utmost to help those who need it the most. And we can do so much more to help them. And number two, we gotta let people know. Because if people don't know, they'll never be able to help. I came here tonight knowing that tonight's theme is risk, but I'll be honest, I would be lying to you if I told you that I felt I risked something by starting this fundraiser. What would have happened to me if I'd failed? Shame, maybe rejection because people didn't buy into what I was saying. Frustration that people didn't agree with me, maybe. But that doesn't compare to me, to the risks that homeless men, women, and children experience in the United States every day just by being homeless. Staying out at night, they risk their safety and their health. And by not having the opportunity the rest of us do, they risk their futures. But this isn't a conscious risk. They didn't have a choice here. So I didn't think that I took a risk when I started a fundraiser. I like to think that I took responsibility. And what I've asked you all here to do today, I don't think I'm asking you to take risks. I think I'm asking you to take responsibility because we're not the ones that are risking anything by devoting time and our efforts to help. But every time we do, they risk a little less. My own journey to come to this conclusion from ignorance and apathy to empathy to action, it changed my life. It made me realize what was really important in the grand scheme of things and how easy it can be for anybody to make a tangible difference if they know and try. I've been honored to have the opportunity to share my journey with you. Thank you.